What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com, and welcome to the exciting second installment of the three simple principles that you can apply to your deadlift in hopes for some pretty substantial results. Now, in the very first part of this, we talked about the principle of moving everything in so that we can short your range of motion a little bit, as well as help you use your best leverages and as much biomechanical support as you possibly can. For this second video, the entire principle, the entire video is all based around taking the slack out of everything. Now, of course, this is never more important than when we're talking about taking the slack out of the bar, which is a term that many of you have probably heard, but a lot of people don't truly understand. If you're kind of more new at this and you're not lifting as heavy weights, for some people, taking the slack out of the bar is nothing more than hearing this little noise. That little click of the bar inside of the collar, for some people, that's all the slack that you're gonna get once you hear that you are good to go. For other people dealing with a little bit heavier weights, you might start to get some bend or some flex in the actual barbell, so you're gonna hear the click, and then it's gonna bend to whatever maximum area it needs to before it actually will leave the ground. And for you, that means taking all the slack out of the bar. Now, there's a couple reasons why you do not want slack in the barbell, but probably the biggest and most obvious of which is that you're gonna get poor energy transfer. Now, my boy Alan Thrall actually made a video about this probably seven years ago, it, it, it was a while ago when he made this video, but he was talking about energy transfer and the basic idea here was that if you have a line hooked up to something of substantial weight and there's slack in that line and you yank on it, you're really not gonna move that object too far because you're getting weak energy transfer. Conversely, if you pull all the slack out of that line and then you apply the same exact force, you're gonna get a lot more motion out of that object, it's gonna be more efficient, it's all better. So you wanna think about that the exact same way as when you're talking about slack in the barbell. However, I'm gonna take it one step further and say that not only are you gonna get poor energy transfer, but it almost always throws you out of position. Now, the reason why I say this is because for every single action, there is going to be a reaction. So if you're lined up in your perfect deadlift pulling position, and then suddenly you jerk on that bar to try to get it to come flying off the ground, one thing is for sure what's gonna happen is you're gonna pull all that slack out and you're gonna turn yourself into a big bow and arrow because I can guarantee you, if you jerk on that bar, it's going to jerk back. And when it jerks back, it's going to pull you out of position. Once you do have time to respond to that jerk and you start pulling back up, the bar is nowhere near where it was when you originally lined up and your body most likely is nowhere near where it was when you originally lined up. So now you're doing a deadlift from some random, non-efficient bad pulling position simply because you jerked on the bar. And like I mentioned in part one, the deadlift is a game of inches. So if that bar floated one inch out in front, trust me, it just got exponentially heavier. If your hips moved, if your core collapsed, whatever happened, small changes in the deadlift lead to big differences, whether they be good differences or bad differences. And one guarantee is that if you're jerking on the bar, it's only leading to bad differences. However, none of that will mean anything if you still have slack in your body. That's why the point of this video is to take the slack out of everything. Now, why don't we start out with your hands? We'll start out the bar, right? Because your hands are super, super important on the deadlift because you should be squeezing that bar as hard as possible. There should be no slack in your grip whatsoever. Number one, because deadlifts are hard to hold on to. And number two, because your body works synergistically, which means if you're squeezing your hands as tightly as you can, you will get more power output. It's also why if you can't open a jar, squeeze the jar and you'll be shocked at how much more power you can get in this little twisty, twisty hand. Now, once all the slack is out of your hands, it's time to move up to your arms where there should be zero bend, especially if you guys are using a mixed grip, that underhand, that supinated hand, you are putting it at a risk for a bicep injury massively if you have any bend in it, whatsoever, because I know it comes as a shocker, but you can't curl what you deadlift. But whether you are supinating, using hook grip, using straps, whatever you're doing, keeping your arms as straight as possible is gonna give you the best energy transfer as well as the shortest range of motion possible. So that is very, very important. They should be nothing more than meat hooks. Now after the arms, of course, we need to talk about the lats. Now, I did address this in the last video. However, guys, if there is any room at all in your armpit and your lats are not locked in, what's gonna happen when you start to apply force to that bar is that it's essentially going to unravel you, right? And suddenly you're gonna find yourself looking a lot like a scared cat. So many people, when they do have one of those scared cat 
kind of rounded back deadlifts, it has nothing to do with their lower lumbar, their lower back area. It has to do with the fact that their lats were not locked in because that is the basis for keeping your lower lumbar stable. Now I will say this is probably one of the harder things to understand when it does come to a bunch of the deadlift cues because it's kind of obscure, right? That's why we talk about for some people, they will be able to use the cue of bending the bar across their shins. It's very similar to doing a straight arm lat pull down just to initiate your lats and get them locked in doing what they're supposed to do. Some people think about putting their shoulder blades into their back pockets, or like I was saying, try to give yourself a belly hug from behind. There are absolutely no right or wrong cues when it comes to initiating your lats. It's only what will work for you personally. So I would highly encourage you play with this a lot because this will make one of the biggest differences in your deadlift at all. But slack in the lats is definitely a recipe for disaster when it comes on the deadlift. And finally, the last place that I think it's very important to take the slack out of is going to be your core or your trunk. And by that, I mean breathing and bracing correctly. Now, if you watch the channel for any amount of time, you will know that I am a massive advocate of breathing and bracing. In fact, I have an entire playlist on it where I go through workshops, walk you guys exactly through it to teach you how to do it correctly. Because in my personal opinion, there is nothing more important than learning how to breathe and brace correctly if you're going to lift heavy weights. But the basic idea here, guys, is that your trunk is a cylinder. Think of it as like a Coke can. Now, if you have an empty Coke can with the top open, it's very easy to dent and collapse, right? Like your body will fold like a tin can. Now, if you fill that thing up with air, because that's what we fill our tube up with, as much air as possible, and then you seal it off and you brace it down, then it is much harder to bend and manipulate, which is exactly what you want to do to keep your spine safe, to keep your back from rounding, to keep anything from changing in your back position on the deadlift. That all has to do with the amount of air that you have in your belly. Now, you combine that with keeping your lats locked in and then suddenly your body's not gonna move at all and that bar position isn't gonna move at all, which means that the force that you're actually applying to the floor to pick that bar up is all gonna go where it's supposed to go and you are gonna have a successful deadlift. All right, so that is it for today, guys. Now, obviously, there are other parts of your body where there could be slack that could be detrimental to your deadlift problems, but being honest with you guys, look, if you get the slack out of the bar and the slack out of those main areas of your body that I talked about, your deadlift's just gonna start improving like crazy, especially if you combine it with the principles that we learned in lesson number one about bringing everything in so that you can shorten your range of motion, get more leg drive, and of course use more leverages as well as your biomechanical support, then you're gonna be shocked at what these couple things are gonna do to help your deadlift. Take your time with it, really try to learn and ingrain good patterns because you're either ingraining good reps or you're ingraining bad reps. So make sure that you're taking your time and you're doing it correctly from the beginning. Of course, part three of this series will be coming out very soon, but I've actually got a couple other different videos that I'm really pumped about releasing in the near future. And we also have new t-shirts coming out for the first time in over a year. It's been a very, very long time since we've done anything with t-shirts. So that's about ready to happen. I'm very, very pumped about that. And hopefully there'll be a couple of you that will be excited about that as well. Other than that, guys, as always, if you guys are looking for a program, whether it be a $25 cookie cutter one or a personalized one, just email me at neversate at gmail.com and we will take care of that. That is exactly how this channel is possible, guys. It's through that type of support. So I do thank each and every single one of you because it means so much more than you realize. I get to live the life of my dreams and it's because of you guys. So I couldn't be more thankful. I will catch you guys later in the week. I hope this was helpful. Until I do, go out, do something amazing lives. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. We need a lot more niceness. We need more nice people in the world. I'll see you then.